God, thank you so much for coming here today to bless us with your story, what God has done in your life uh, that time 14 years ago until now. So Chad, how did you get invited to Hungry Generation? It started uh, with a friend. He um, was in radio broadcasting with me. Some of you guys know him, Bryson Foster. And uh, Bryson went into a room, closed the door and started praying. And... Uh, Asked for God to bring him somebody into that room that God would change. And uh, me being me, I just happened to walk in the room to go talk to my buddy and see what's going on. And he just kind of, hey, will you go to youth group with me? It's over here. And, and so I decided, well, yeah, yeah, you're my friend. You're cool. I'll, I'll go with you. I'll check this out. And uh, that night I came here and it was like, it was like Vladimir knew everything about me. And knew who I was, knew where I was from, you know, because uh, I went from the background of, uh, you know, I was, I was doing drugs all the time, I was partying all the time, uh, chasing girls, doing all kinds of things that I shouldn't be doing, especially at that age, and, uh, and just living a life completely a sin and going crazy. And it, Vladimir was up on the stage and was just speaking, and God was just speaking right through him and knew everything about me, everything I've done. It was like there was nobody in the room, and he was talking directly at me, you know. I know this, and this is what's going to happen. This is where you're headed. These are the things that you're doing. This is how you feel. Um, this is what's going on. This is where you're headed. These are the things that are happening. This is what's going on inside. And, and it was just, everything was there, all of it. It was just so real. God hit me. I was probably the first one up here, <laughs> you know, right past everybody. And, uh, and that was it. You know, that was, that was the end uh, uh, of everything. Um, that, that night I got saved, talked to Vlad, and met some good brothers and sisters here. And uh, drugs, everything stopped that night. I Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. It's so crazy and amazing how when the Spirit of God is in a place, whether we understood or knew about deliverance at all, the Spirit of God was still in the business of delivering people. Even 14 years ago, amongst all of us little children at the time, God was moving. And those same children are now the adults running this place. And children younger than we are the same ones praying and delivering people today. So let's put our hands together for Jesus. Chad, so since that night, since you received salvation and God miraculously set you free from drugs and alcohol and all of that, how has your life been like now for these past 14 years? And what has God been doing since then? God's just been blessing us. Uh, there was a couple times I tried to run, and no matter how far I ran, he always reeled me back in and brought me back and uh, just never gave up on me. And so... I've been moving forward, you know, God's opened many doors for us. I met my wife, and she helped bring me back into the right areas, and now we've got two beautiful children together, and then I've got two wonderful stepchildren, and, and a career, and everything else that uh, I, I moved out of state, and when I came back in state for work, um, that's when God started knocking more doors down. I met my wife, I was looking for a career, and I left, a, I left one career on, on just a blind faith and hope that another door would open and, and through prayer and hoping and, and just trusting God, he's been knocking down doors one after another. I worked with a guy on a, on a, on a Friday and uh, I was trying to get into the maintenance position that I'm in now and everybody's common uh, word about it was somebody either has to die or retire for you to get a position in maintenance. I worked with a guy on a Friday. That Monday, they called us upstairs to talk to the crew, and a guy passed away in his sleep over the weekend. And that position is now my position. And it's just one of those crazy things. And When one door closes, another door opens. Amen? Amen. So continue. Tell us more about what God has done in your life. It, you know, the same thing, we, we were looking for a home and praying and trying to find a home for us to live while my wife was uh, pregnant and we were looking for a home. Same thing happened. An older man was, was living in that home, was in a hospital, 
passed away and we got our home blessed, like half price, like amazing, just blessings left and right. Um, yeah, let's put our hands together for Jesus. You know, the Bible says that old things pass away and behold, I make all things new. Amen. But with things like that, it's, it, it's, it's strange and funny, but, but it's encouraging because when there wasn't a way, God made a way. When there wasn't any hope, God made something happen. God moves when we pray and we ask him for things to happen. Whatever plans we had, God made better and bigger plans for us. And it's the same thing with our children and our testimony, our marriage together my wife and I have been moving forward, and our children have been being blessed and touched left and right through God and his presence, through the things that he's been doing for us. Um, our, our two children both had little medical issues with them, and with both scenarios with our children, the doctors have scratched their heads and been saying things like, I don't understand how they are doing so well or how these things have come across because medically and scientifically and things like this these things aren't normal they don't happen they it, it just doesn't make sense and i'm like well it's god god's doing it and it's just been a testimony that we've been through and we're in a position where god has blessed us with the home with the finances with our children with all these things to where we've gone from the people that it were we're worried when things would happen, like, well, why is this happening to us? Why, why us to why not us? Why can't we use these things that God has for his glory when, when something, something bad happens or something that's scary, instead of just getting worried about it, we've been able to stand in a position of why can't we have these things so we can stand strong and show God through this to help the other people that don't have any hope, to show them that there's strength and there's things that God will do and, and just move forward. Amen, amen. So Chad, now that you have been walking with the Lord for the past 14 years and God has been blessing you and providing opportunities for you and healing your children of various physical infirmities, what can you advise to people who are maybe in this room or watching us online who are thinking, I want to take that next step with God, but I just don't know what's next. What can you tell them? Do it. <laughs> just do it. Um, there is there's no loss. There is no bad thing that's going to happen from putting trust into God. There's The only thing you're going to lose is your problems, really. Like, when you, when you open that door to have God come into you, you go from doing everything by yourself to having somebody carry you through everything. 